today I'm going to talk some of our work related to crop nutritional improvement. And uh, as part of the USDA lab, our research is mission oriented. So the goal of my lab's research is to improve the nutritional quality and the health promoting property of uh, food crops. So why is, uh, why is there a lead, I think, to this audience? We, I believe we all know that the, the malnutrition, especially micronutrient deficiency of iron, zinc, and uh, vitamin A affect a large number of people in the world, particularly in those poor countries. So according to WHO, the malnutrition affect about uh, three, 30 million people. If you do the calculation, it's about one one death per second. So malnutrition really is a serious problem or world health problem. So on the other hand, in developed country, although the malnutrition is, or micronutrient deficiency is not a big problem, but there are increased rate of chronic uh, diseases. Actually, it's well known that one third of cancer deaths are preventable by through diet changes. So if we can provide food enriched with micronutrients and the phytonutrients, so it should have some impact to help combine malnutrition and chronic diseases problem. So to achieve uh, our goals, uh, so the approach we use the, uh, is through level gene through larval gene discover and uh, also try to understand the mechanism how this larval gene, for example, control a high level of phytonutrient and the micronutrient accumulation. And uh, also we try, because our ultimate goal is to provide food enriched with crop nutritional uh, values. So we try to ev uh, evaluate if those genes Larval genes can be used as uh, larval genetic tool for crop nutritional improvement. So my lab's research focused on three areas, uh, include the carotenoid, uh, anthocyanins, and uh, selenium. So we are interested in those uh, compounds because they are known to play important role for human nutrition and the health. For example, carotenoids are known to provide precursors for vitamin A synthesis. And it's also known that intake of food enriched with carotenoid and flavonoids can reduce the risk of cancer and heart disease. And selenium not only serve as anti-cancer agent, it's also essential micronutrient for human health. So today I will spend most of my time talking about uh, our research on uh, understanding the control of carotenoid accumulation. And I will spend the last uh, few minutes, if I still have the time, to give you a brief outline what we have done with uh, anthocyanin and selenium research. So carotenoids are a group of uh, pigment we all are familiar with because they are responsible for the red, orange, and yellow color found in many flower fruits and uh, vegetables. So carotenoids, uh, chemically speaking, are mainly C40 terpenoids or isoprenoids. The carotenoid biosynthetic pathway has been established over half a century ago. And uh, very interesting work with carotenoids be because different carotenoids have different colors. For example, for example the tomato, f uh, tomato fruits accumulate a lot of lycopene, you all know, so it's red color. And the carrots and the sweet potato accumulate a lot of alpha carotene and beta carotene, they are orange color. And the daffodil flower and the marigold flower accumulate a lot of lutein, so they are yellow color. So all of those genes involved with carotenoid biosynthetic pathway have been cloned, but we don't know, still don't know much about the Rictory gene transcription factors or Rictory genes that control carotenoid biosynthesis, biosynthetic pathway genes or enzymes. So. Here I use James' picture again. 
So crack noise essentially can synthesize in all plastic, and uh, but they accumulate in high level, mainly in chloroplast in green leaf tissues, and also accumulate high level in chrome plast uh, in many flowers, fruits, and uh, roots. Since our goal is to enhance crack noise level in storage tissues, so we focus most of our research on understand the crotina accumulation in chrome plast. And since we start working on this project, we use the orange color flow curd uh, mutant as a model system. This is a larval mutation and it's a spontaneous mutation. It's caused a high level of beta keratin accumulation. And it's also under the control of a single dominant genes. So through position cloning, we isolate a single gene that co-segregate with the OR and uh, functional confirm it through uh, phenotypical complementations. So what's the OR gene? So OR is a gene called a protein with uh, unknown functions, and, but it contains a DNA J existing rich domain and also a transient peptide. This gene, the mutation is due to the insertion of retro transposons. So in the process to find how this gene confirm a high level of beta keratin accumulation in the orange curd cauliflower, <coughs> and uh, we first look at the subcellular localization of the OR protein. As you can see here, they clearly OR targets to plastic in both leaf tissues and also root tips. So we examined the plastic change in white type cauliflower and also in the cauliflower mutant. And uh, as you can see, if we look at the meristem, uh, you actually cauliflower curds is influence <coughs> the meristem tissue. So if we look at those cell and also shoot meristem tissue, those two tissue accumulate a high level of crop noise. So we found there are numerous proplast per cell, but with the mutation, you see all those proplast uh, were converted into one or two large chromoplasts. So the the microscope study plus uh, uh, some of our biochemical and uh, molecule study, and it all suggested it all suggested that the OR functions in triggering the differentiation of uh, proplast or other lung colored plastic into chrome plast. So currently, uh, actually, until now, the OR still represents the only no gene that confers the, the conversion from proplast into chromoplast. Actually, the OR not only confirm high level for beta keratin accumulation in cauliflower, and it has been shown also confirm high level of beta keratin accumulation in mellow fruit. So work from Phil Simmons group from Wisconsin, they showed that there are three QTLs control beta keratin accumulation in mellow fruit, and, but they can't find uh, any single carotenoid genes associated with those, uh, with those QTLs, but instead they found, uh, they found that the OR is aligned with the major QTL. QTLs. Further, the work from Kobe Tenmos uh, group from Israel, they also showed that the OR genes are associated with the yellow or uh, orange flash colors in a F2 population and also in a white uh, genetic collections they have from the world. So in collaboration with them and also in collaborate with Michael Mizor and who help us grow different mellow fruits in his uh, greenhouse. So we cloned the OR home lock genes from both orange mellow and uh, white, white mellow and uh, green mellow. And Michael helped us uh, to select from his inbred 
such as uh, materials. And we transform those genes into Arabidopsis plants. As you can see here, the OR gene from orange mellow, like the OR gene from cauliflower, induce a high level of carotenoid accumulation. But the OR gene from green mellow fruit or even from white mellow fruit do not induce carotenoid, which further confirm the role of the OR in induced beta carotene accumulation in mellow fruit. So from our study, and essentially we provide additional level mechanism to control carotenoid accumulation. So, no, so we know that the accumulation of carotenoid actually only metabolizes uh, the net result of biosynthesis and the turnover. And the through study of uh, OR mutants and the OR, mm, through study of the OR genes, we showed that if we can induce the formation of chrome plus to enhance the sink strength, it can also have uh, has profound effect on carotenoid accumulation in plants. Actually, this has been very well established in this uh, field now because uh, many like a tomato mutant, uh, HP123, they all showed that the plastic site may be associated with increased level of carotenoid accumulation too. So now we know that uh, based on our loss study, we know that the main function of o OR is to convert the plastic. So how, how, what's the mechanism? So how does the OR regulate carotenoid accumulation and the chrome plast uh, development? The approach we use are two. One, of course, looking for the OR interacting protein. And the other approach is looking for genes or proteins required for high level for beta carotene accumulation. So in to find the OR interactive proteins, we did a co-IP experiment using the Arabidopsis plants, express the OR GFP and the GFP only. So we extract the protein from the Arabidopsis plants and mix with the GFP and then separate the eluted protein in SDS page gel. So in collaborate with uh, ta uh, the Tannhauser's uh, group, and uh, we slice each lane into 10 pieces and identified the proteins by mass spectrum. So by compare the protein identified from the ORGFP with those identified from the GFP only, and we found there are about there are 19 proteins repetitively identified from about from over at least the three biological repeat. Therefore, they represent uh, good candidates for OR interacting as OR interacting protein. So very excitingly, we found the PSY or phyton senses is one of uh, one of them. And the uh, PSY, here's the simplified carotenoid biosynthesis pathway. As you can see that the PSY represents the first uh, enzyme in the carotenoid biosynthetic pathway. And the PSY is also known as the rate limiting step for carotenoid biosynthesis. Actually, a lot of experiment showed that if you alternate uh, the PSY expression it can have profound effect on carotenoid accumulation as showed here, the golden rice, golden colonna, and uh, golden potato. Actually, the rice, golden rice one and golden rice two, the only difference, they choose a different uh, version of uh, PSY. So if we found any factors affect on um, PSY activities, it should affect on um, carotenoid accumulation. So PSY is a candidate as OR interacting proteins through CoIP, and we use the three different approaches to confirm the interaction. And the first, in collaborate with Ralph Welsh from Germany, 
and uh, he did uh, is too high for assays to confirm O and PSY interaction. And uh, as showed here, and uh, he found that the PSY interact with OR, not only from aerobidopsis, but also from cauliflower too. And uh, additionally, we did uh, pull down acid to confirm this uh, interaction. And as you can see, you've mixed the PSY GFB with the ORC mix and, uh, and pull down with the GFP beads and clearly we can, you, we can detect the pull down of the OR protein, confirm such interaction further. And uh, actually those are all Xiang Jin Zhou's work and he showed that use BIFC assay and uh, he, we clearly showed the OR PSY interaction in vivo and uh, in plastic. So all of those experiments confirm it indeed OR interact with PSY. So how does this interaction affect on carotenoid accumulation? And what we did first is we look at the expression like a PSY in OR overexpression line and antisense line. And we also looked at the OR express in PSY overexpressing line and uh, co-suppression line. And as you can see here, alteration of uh, OR and the PSY expression does not really dramatically affect the expression of a larger, a larger gene. That suggests most likely the, F, the interaction effect at the protein level. So what we did next is we put the PSY GFP and into Columbia background and also introduced it into OR background. And then we treat the aerobidopsis leaf with CHX, a protein biosynthesis inhibitor, and uh, sampled at a different time to look at the PSY protein level. If you look at, the, if you compare at a 12 hour time, you can clearly see that the PSY level or protein level in the OR background is much higher than what you see in the Columbia background, which suggests that the, the OR can help reduce the turnover rate of PSY. It also indicates the OR regulate the carotenoid accumulation through regulating the PSY protein st stability. And in addition, Ralph Welsh also examined the PSY expression in uh, aerobidopsis plants transformed with OR. And if you look at the PSY transcript level, it's similar between Y type and the OR overexpression line. But if you look at the PSY protein level and the two different OR overexpression line showed much higher protein level than the Y type control. The high protein level, more stable of the PSY can indicate a higher activity of PSY to control carotenoid biosynthesis as a result if you can see clearly those overexpressed lines show the high level of carotenoid accumulation. So additionally, uh, except the PSY, we found those can the among the 19 proteins, candidate proteins, there are several proteins are involved with plastic import machineries. And uh, Xiangjun did a experiment BIFC in vivo ex uh, ex experiment to confirm such interaction, although weak, you can don't know if you can see clearly the interactions in the outer envelope membrane in chloroplast. So just uh, based on this uh, study, and here's our model for OR action, just uh, how OR control carotenoid accumulation and the plastic biogenesis. <coughs> and uh, we believe that the, like the Y type OR interact with PSY to control carotenoid biosynthesis in a plastic. 
and it also interact with our envelope membrane protein to control plastic import or precursor protein import into plastic for plastic biogenesis. However, with the mutation, the OR somehow um, somehow interferes, uh, somehow change its interaction with the, P with the PSY, cause the increased PSY protein stability, and as a result, it's caused increase of carotenoid accumulation. And uh, we also believe that although we don't have experimental evidence yet, we also believe that the OR also maybe made the out envelope membrane protein more stable and uh, then it helps select the import uh, precursor proteins for carotenoid biosynthesis and uh, carotenoid accumulation. And uh, I think we have uh, some we have some preliminary data to support this and uh, and in addition from this, we also do, we also try to find the genes and proteins required for high level of beta carotene accumulation. Mm -hmm. We think what OR does, although it interacts with PSY, and uh, we think the most important role for it is to improve, to enhance the ca capacity for synthesized carotenoid. There are additional genes and proteins that are involved with the high level of beta carotenes. So, and uh, in collaborate again with Tang Tanghauser and Yongyang, and we did the proteinomic analyze of chrome plus protons from six crop uh, vegetables and uh, fruits. And uh, we found that the proteins involved with ATP senses and also with energy transport are most abundant proteins from all of those chrome plus we, we studied. And currently we have, uh, we have a very efficient uh, system to functional study the proteins involved with chrome plus biogenesis and carotenoid accumulation. So we are testing those hypotheses if those proteins are indeed important to control carotenoid accumulation and uh, chrome plus uh, accum accumulation. And uh, in addition, we also did RNA seq analyze with help from James Lab to build up more than 80 different <laughs> libraries, <laughs> RNA seq libraries, just by compare the different fruits and uh, different fruits and vegetables. We believe uh, OR is involved with this process, and also aerobidopsis con contain OR without OR. And uh, we get the RNA-seq data and uh, collab again in collaboration with Fei, and uh, he helped us analyze those RNA-seq data. So we are doing data mining, and hopefully we can find some genes uh, and uh, or some uh, some differential express genes from all of those uh, different crop species and uh, as best candidates for functional conf confirm and for their involved with carotenoid accumulations. So while we are doing those work, try to understand the mechanism of how OR control high level of carotenoid accumulation, and we also did some work to, to see if the OR can be used as a novel genetic tool for crop, crop nutritional improvement. And the crop species we, we choose is the potato plants. As all of you know, potato is the fourth largest uh, crop, although they have a different color, skin colors, but most of the cultivated potato normally contains <coughs> very low level of uh, crop noise. So in collaborate with Joyce Van Wyk and from BTI, we introduced the OR into potato tuber. Potato plants, as you can see, the potato tuber, the different lines also sh all show the high level of carotenoid accumulation 
in compare with vector only and uh, lung transgenic plants. And I think perhaps the most interesting thing is we found that the OR stimulates carotenoid accumulation during long-term storage. And if you look at the picture in the fresh tube, the OR gives some orange color. But after five months storage, the color is much prolonged than what you see with the fresh tube, tuber. So we did time course experiment from zero to five months. And if you see the carotenoid level and with two different lights increased over 10 times during, during long-term storage. And we know beta carotene is the most potent uh, precursor for vitamin A biosynthesis. So we also look at the beta carotene level during the storage. And here's the vector only control, and here's the tubers from zero, one, three, five months of storage. And if you look at the beta carotene peak, it's continual increase during cold storage. And uh, if we look at the beta carotene composition among all the carotenoids, the tubers, and at the beginning only 15%. But after five months storage, although the total level increased about tenfold, and the beta carotene level also increased much more with 35%. And again, in collaborate with uh, Raf from uh, Walsh from Germany, he examined the PSY level. And the, as you can see, the PSY level is much higher. And uh, since the OR can uh, reduce the turnover PSY, so the, the stabilize of PSY produce uh, higher activity to to cause the beta carotene accumulation. So what's the significance of this finding? And uh, we know that a staple crop contain very low level of carotenoids uh, contribute to the prevalence of uh, vitamin A deficiency problem. And uh, we, now we also know that the beta carotene loss is really the serious problem, or carotenoid loss is a serious problem during um, post-harvest storage, actually, when you look at the yellow, yellow maize during post-harvest storage, carotenoid get lost. And uh, now I think that people start to report about the golden rice. After two to four months of storage, the beta carotene loss uh, 50 to 80 percent. So the beta carotene loss is really serious problem during, although, they go fast to enhance the total level, but if it continues to turn over during post-harvest, so it's not good for us to. And uh, we believe that the OR gene could per, uh, provide a solution to in, improve beta carotene stability. Why is that? Because the OR causes the plastic change to so <coughs> make the pla carotenoid accumulate inside of chromoplast more stable storage and prevent its uh, degradation. And the people often ask me, if you put the beta carotene inside of the chromoplast, are they bioavailable? So to address that question, in collaborate, so in collaborate with Mark Felia, a nutritionist from Ohio State University, and his lab helped us to access the bioavailability of the, the beta carotene in, in potato tubers. So if you just focus on these two yellow bars and uh, compare with the beta carotene level, so essentially what they showed, uh, they showed here is that if we provide the food contain more beta carotene and the cell has the ability to uptake more, which also indicated if there are more beta carotene, they are more available. So suggest that the beta carotene in the sequential structure within the chromoplast is bioavailable. So the, in addition, we clearly we showed that we can increase the 
beta carotene or carotene level or through biotech approach to introduce, for example, our cauliflower or our gene. So uh, to see if it's possible to identify functional allele of the OR for traditional breeding, traditional breeding purpose. So we did some mutagenize of the Y type OR. Actually, the OR protein is highly conserved among all plant species. So if you look at, uh, we searched all plants and you see all, you see all are there. So just uh, here we showed that if we change the single nucleotide of the Y type of OR, and it can cause carotenoid accumulation, just like what we see with cauliflower OR. And uh, currently we have done site direct mutagenesis with a number of different uh, nucleotide to change the amino acid, uh, and uh, we are waiting for the result to see if we mutagenize particular domains or sections of the ORG can cause the carotenoid accumulation and uh, also plastic change. So, and uh, also I'm going to do the collaborate research uh, with uh, Michael Go when he's here now, right? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> So with my goal and uh, looking for a little variation in maize collections. And uh, the, the key part for us is we want to find uh, not only uh, its induced carotenoid accumulation, but the key part is with the functional allele of the OR, if it's, ca if it's possible to maintain the stability of the carotenoid. Uh, turn, turn over. I think that's our major goal. And uh, when I talk to Mike about this, uh, believe it or not, with the maize uh, genome sequence, we can't find the OR gene, the fully sequenced the genome. Okay, and uh, I just uh, use last a few minutes to talk quickly, uh, highlight what we've done with the Ancestry research and uh, uh, selenia research. So ancocyanin is a larger group of uh, pigment compared with carotenoids. Ancocyanin are water soluble pigment, so they are responsible for red, red uh, purple, and blue color, again found in many flower, fruits, and uh, vegetables. So I'm going to just talk one work uh, we did with the purple cauliflower. The purple cauliflower accumulates lots of anthocyanin. It's a very unique cauliflower because it's cause a unique mutant because it's caused tissue specific accumulation of anthocyanin. This uh, mutant is uh, also a spontaneous mutation. Our genetic study showed that it's controlled by a single semi-dominant gene. <coughs> And uh, this work has been done, done by former graduate student from this department, Li Wei Chao. And uh, Li Wei used the candidate gene uh, analyze approach, and uh, she found that a MAP transcription factor is respond uh, is a MAP transcription factor co-segregate with the purple nocus. And uh, she found that the mutation is due to the insertion of a retrotransposon. So normally retrotransposon insertion suppress the gene expression, but as you can see here, clearly she showed that the retrotransposon insertion induce <laughs> the, uh, the transcription factor expression. So to find out how such uh, retrotransposition insertion induce, induce uh, the gene expression, and uh, she analyzed the, pro, uh, the transposon in sequence, and uh, she found that there are, with the insertion of the transposon, there are a number of E boxes. So the E box is a cis acting rectory motif, so she did uh, sort of a promoter analyze to include a different number of the E box, and she found the, the activation of the gene directly correlate with the number of E, e box. And through also through Easter 2 hype analyze and uh, 
complement uh, into different transcription factor knockout lines. And uh, she found that the activation of the, or oh, here's the Richter uh, network, uh, she, we hypothesized. So the activation of the, activation of the MAP transcription factor promotes the formation of Richter multi uh, network. Uh, contain WD40 protein, B, uh, basic helix, helix protein, and uh, MAP transcription factor. And uh, we believe this formation of the complex somehow again activates uh, those, further activates those genes. And those uh, complex combine with promoter uh, of the late anthocyanin biosensitic pathway gene to activate uh, and society biosenses to produce such profound, uh, uh, striking phenotype. And I think the most interesting uh, for this work, and uh, we, we found that the purple gene is uh, unique in promote tissue specific uh, and society accumulation, for example, and cause specific accumulation in curved tissue and also in the seeds and the sperm. This is fairly unique. Um, and uh, we see a lot of, uh, lots of uh, purple crops because the accumulation of anthocyanin in some tissue, but there are not, I think there are not many cause the endosperm, cause the anthocyanin accumulation in endosperm. And we know the staple crop, we eat uh, endosperm, so a group in China and they are interested in the purple gene, so we give them the purple gene and they try to generate the answer purple rice and hope to induce the purple gene, uh, get the anthocyanin express in, in the seeds and the sperm, not outside of the seed coat. The additionally, I want to talk briefly about our Selenia research. Selenia is uh, essential micronutrient f uh, uh, for humans. Uh, selenia costs one, uh, 15, uh, it's estimated selenia deficiency affect about 15% of the world population. So one work we did is uh, bio try to do some research for biofortification. Actually, selenia get a lot of public attention in this country. So selenia is an anti-cancer uh, agent. So bio for biofortification, we search, uh, we screen the lump of germplasm from different crop species, like here from uh, lettuce and from broccoli and uh, from wheat and uh, all those germplasm uh, screening showed that there are about twofold variation in selenia content. And uh, in addition, and we are very interested in the biosynthesis of uh, bioactive form of selenia. Those are monomethylate form of selenia from broccoli plants. So our strategy, uh, our strategy is uh, try to isolate those genes, for example, involve the SE methylcellular system biosynthesis accumulation and uh, looking for the genes control volatilization. And we are hoping we can manipulate the uptake of selenia, the accumulation of selenia, and reduce the turnover of for volatilization to achieve the accumulation of those bioactive form of uh, selenium. So we are hoping, uh, in general, we are hoping through level gene discover and understand the control mechanism can provide some level strategies uh, to, to improve uh, crop nutrition value for better human nutrition and uh, health. So the last, I'd like to thank some of all of my com current lab members, although I didn't talk most of their work. And just uh, most of the unpublished works are from Xiangjun's uh, work. 
and I mentioned a few previous labs work in this talk. And also I'd like to thank many of the uh, former collaborator and the current and uh, some of the current collaborators. So our fundings from USDA AIS and currently also from Barngram. And uh, thank you for your attention. I'll be happy to answer your questions.